Greetings and salutations everyone. Welcome to the video on Paper 2, the profile. Apologies that I'm just getting this video to some of you. This video is going to be used for both my 12-week and my 16-week online classes. The 16-week class is getting it first. So if you're later watching this video and you're in the 12-week class, everything in the video still applies but the due dates on the prompts that I'm showing. So just keep that in mind. So, let's just get straight to it. This is probably going to be a bit of a longer video, so prepare yourself. So, the prompt, paper two, the profile. Let me... Yeah, so, the first paper in the course was the personal narrative. Congratulations. Most of you guys are just now finally submitting that. You know, so in the personal narrative, you know, English 101 is, of course, mostly built on, you know, expository, descriptive type writing. You know, so paper number two, the profile, is going to be practicing similar skills, you know, but this time there is going to be sort of a research component involved, you know, which will help you later, you know, with paper four, you know, the research paper. This is a, a certain type of research, you know, which will be an interview. So, paper two, the profile. <clears throat> you know, um, this, this tells you, this gives you a little bit of explanation. This prompt isn't mine, by the, by the way. I borrowed it from someone. You know, but um, pay the personal narrative asks you to draw from your own experience to write from a first-person point of view. Second assignment, the profile asks you to deal, draw primarily from your observations and from a source outside yourself. So what you're going to be doing with this paper is you're going to actually be interviewing someone in the local community or maybe somebody that's not in the local community, somebody you know who would have an interesting story to tell. You now we do live in the online age. You know, where you can Skype or FaceTime someone, you know, to do an interview that way. You know, but you're going to choose a pl place, organization, or event. Or maybe just a person in general. You're going to write a profile, a feature about them. And we could call this a profile. We can call it a feature article. You know, so the genre that we're involving ourselves in, you guys have probably read a hundred thousands of these in the local newspapers, maybe articles like this online about, um, or in magazines, especially magazines, you know, profiles are, you know, very heavy in those. You know, so you're going to detail something about a person, what's interesting about the person, what kind of story does the person have to tell, you know, why should we care about this person or this place? Or maybe a business, if you're profiling a business, you know, or a school, or what have you. You know, why should we care? You know, why should we be interested and involved? You know, so, the, of course, the textbook at WVU, which is where we have this curriculum, you know, says the unit is actually called Writing to Tell Someone Else a Story. And so paper one, you told your own story. You now you had your own experience from which to draw. You know, this time, you're telling somebody else's story completely. Now, so as it says, you're going to need to report objectively. You know, so be sure you're positioned as an outside observer. You know, so it says here that means that you cannot write about something you already know well, like a group you already belong to or a place you frequent regularly. Pick something intriguing that you would like to know more about. Also, be sure that you choose a topic that will allow you to interview someone. Now, again, this isn't completely my prompt, you know, but the advice here is mostly sound. You know, you want to interview someone where you have some level of objectivity, you know, where you're not completely biased, you know, in how you would go about telling the story. You know, you want to learn something in the interview, you know, that will actually help you write the feature. You know, so, uh, 
you know, lots of times students make the mistake of, you know, interviewing their mother or their father or their grandfather. You know, oftentimes, unless that figure actually has an interesting story to tell, you know, those papers are often boring, you know, because uh, they don't really have an angle or a point, you know, which is uh, something I'm going to talk about more in just a second. And so you're going to do well if you mostly maintain you know, an objective stance. You know, let the story play itself out. Let it grow based off your interview. So as far as the, what you need to do, the first thing you need to do, and that's for next, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to ask for that for next Tuesday's check-in. Of course, this is for the 16-week class. You know, the 12-week class instructions will be forthcoming when we get there. You know, but the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to pitch your topic to me. So you might not necessarily know your angle yet, you know, um, what story you're going to tell because you actually probably haven't interviewed this person yet. You know, but you, actually, but you do at least need to propose your topic to me pitch why you think this person would make for a good interview probably wouldn't hurt to ask the person if they would be willing to have an interview you know if you pitch your, your topic to me so that's the first thing i'm going to ask for that as i say for that tuesday check-in but as long as you get that to me let's say now next wednesday or thursday of next week you know in the 16 week course as long as I can read it and approve it, you know, before you actually write a draft, you know, I will be happy. You know, so once you propose your project and once I approve it, you then are going to conduct an interview with one person or maybe several people, you know, depending on the type of scoop you hope to get. To do that, you're going to want to write down your questions ahead of time, carefully thinking out what you need to know, and write down the person's answers. You know, so, you know, as far as that goes, you know, you can actually ask the person, you know, to allow you to record. You know, most of the, you have to actually ask. You can't just implicitly do it. Just for ethical reasons. You know, but you can also keep sort of a transcript. You know, if you're a fast typer of the person's responses too. That way you can get some direct quotes. You know, so let as I keep going through the prompt, let's uh, jump back and forth to some slides. see just a moment to get this settled You know, so you might ask yourself first, you know, what are different types of profiles, you know, that, um, you know, I can actually do. You know, so there's several different genres of profiles, hopefully depending on the type of person, on the person you choose to interview, you already maybe kind of know which profile will lead to fruitful results. You know, based on these categories, you already kind of maybe know the story, maybe you don't know everything about it. You know, you can then sort of garner things from there. The personality profile says the subject may be famous or not so famous, but has done something of interest to others. You know, so a local celebrity, perhaps. You know, this type usually shows how a person gained recognition. The personality profile is very much like a character sketch. You know, so... Um, you know, usually a profile like this 
you know, you're kind of painting a picture for the reader, you know, as far as what makes this person interesting, what makes this person unique, why should we care about this person, maybe even like what can we learn about this person. You know, those are usually what we mean by personality profiles. Just a second. We have another called human interest profile. As we see here, you know, this is the most common type of profile. Now, basically what a human interest profile is, you're telling a rags to riches type of story. You know, someone has overcame something you know, in their lives, they've come through some great odds, they're, and they're now a success. You know, it's, of course, how do we define success? You know, well, people define that differently. Some people think success, you know, if you, defining success is like defining happiness, right? It's a hard thing to define. You know, but, you know, you're telling how someone overcame great odds to maybe come to some type of contentment, you know, Maybe they're a local leader in the community. Maybe they have, maybe somebody has had a family and this, their family has done well in the community. You know, or maybe somebody has founded a business and they've made lots of money and now drive around in, Mer in a Mercedes, right? You know, so, or maybe it might even be something like somebody has overcome some kind of great illness, you know, and is now well, you know, and now has a newfound look at life. All kinds of different examples, you know, for human interest stories. You know, those, usually a human interest story is made to make the reader feel good, you know, make the reader happy, you know, give the reader some kind of inspiration. We also have... The news profile, you know, the news profile. So something I should mention, you know, these genres of profiles aren't all sort of unique. You know, so we can maybe have like a human interest profile blended with a news profile. You know, but a news profile kind of maybe gives a human element to something that's happening in the news. You know, so as I'm recording this video, remember the 15th, 2018, you know, there's lots of um, things happening in the news right now. You know, we have uh, sexual harassment scandals about the new appointed Supreme Court not Justice nominee. You know, we have uh, the hurricane, you know, destroying communities in North Carolina, you know, we have, there's all kinds of news stories on any given day, you know, so if you, not even, not to mention local news, things that are happening in southern West Virginia in our cases, you know, maybe, maybe it would be something like a new, of course, we've had a hard time with our economy in West Virginia, it might even be something like reporting on that. So you're just reporting on something that's newsworthy you know, to the community. Maybe it has a um, human element to it. You know, the, I'll post this PowerPoint for you guys. You know, but I'll, this PowerPoint was actually made by one of my former students who is now a teacher who I'm now very proud of. You know, she is now sending me her stuff. You know, so, uh, yeah, it's a very proud teacher. You know, so, but she put a link up to a um, profile that was written pretty close to Morgan Pound. You know, so take a look at that. That's a pretty good example. Um, and then, of course, there's the past events profile. Now, this is a pretty common type. You know, this is where you interview someone who maybe went through some kind of historical event, you know, or maybe has a unique spin, a unique take, you know, on an event, a historical event. You know, maybe 
person who says sometimes it's a human interest history lesson. Maybe someone overcame a great obstacle, you know, as far as historical events go. You know, I was once, when I was in high school, you know, I once was lucky enough to interview someone who lived in Herndon who uh, was a D-Day veteran. He was at Utah Beach in you know, uh, 1944. Uh, he gave me a story about like how he found his faith you know, amidst all that violence and you know, depravity you know, that he witnessed there. You know, so that made it for a very interesting historical sketch you know, from a, a local veteran, for instance. You know, but it doesn't have to be anything that dramatic. You know, maybe, you know, but if, some, if you know someone, maybe somebody was a veteran, or um, maybe someone participated in a strike or something like that. You know, I'm just coming up with examples here. But if you know someone who has gone through something interesting, you know, in their life, maybe historically speaking, you know, that can make, those make for good profiles. As it says, this article typically makes a connection to the present day, okay? So, you know, of course, some themes are universal, right? So, the, some themes are always relevant to the present day. So hopefully that gave you a good idea as far as uh, types of profiles. Now let's go through this slide and talk about how you interview somebody you know, when you actually uh, do the interview. Just one moment. Get the tech. Tech rights. Yeah, so there are, whenever you actually do go to interview someone, like I said, there's always the etiquette of uh, you need to ask for permission to record. You know, but some things uh, you know, should go without saying, you know, but I always have to say them. You, know, uh, you don't want to ask someone overly personal questions. You know, unless that's the angle that you later plan to take, okay? You know, such as what their sexual orientation is, right? It's always good to sort of stay professional and on track. It doesn't even matter if you're interviewing somebody you know really well. You know, you present a good sort of ethos, a good credibility, you know, if you stick being professional. You want to ask open-ended questions? So, you want to ask questions that are sort of large enough in scope where you're not just going to get a yes or no answer. You know, you kind of want to lead the reader on, not the reader, but to lead the interviewee on, you know, to where you're going to get the scoop that you need. You also want to um, improvise, right? You don't want to just stick to maybe the 10 or 20 questions you come up with. You know, you actually want to, you don't want to be a robot doing an interview, right? It's always good to maybe, if you see the conversation going somewhere, you know, ask questions to extend the conversation, you know, and then get back to the script. You know, so think of uh, interview questions, you know, like their uh, template. You know, this is where I want to go, you know, but... You know, let the, uh, enjoy the journey getting there, if that makes sense. You know, so if you're interviewing somebody for a job, you know, you can, uh, this job interview questions is on here because, just to give you an example of, uh, you know, standard types of questions that you would get in an environment like that. You know, so what we would do to here then is think of what are some standard types of questions that you would use to interview someone. You know, so if you go for a job interview, you know, you're going to learn, th you usually you're asked things like, why am I interested in working here? 
Why are you the best candidate for the job? Tell me about a time you had to deal with a co-worker who wasn't doing his fair share. What did you do? Tell me about a time that you didn't work well with a supervisor. Tell me about a time you failed. That one is always you know, an interview question, especially for professors. And how do you measure success? What's your dream and your nightmare job? All those are kind of standard questions you would get in an environment like that. You know, so you might ask yourself, you know, so some of these questions might even be pertinent to the questions you come up with for your interviewee. But you also have to maybe, I don't have answers for all the different, for questions for all the different types of interviews you'll do, you know, but ask yourself, well, maybe what are some common, common types of questions? To do that, though, you need to know something about the person you're interviewing already or the, per, or the business or place or what have you. You want to do your research beforehand you know, to come up with your questions. Right? Otherwise, it kind of makes you look unprepared if you don't. He says, make time for questions at the end of the interview. Ask the candidate if they have questions. You know, so, um, you know, don't, maybe you stick to your script, but maybe always sort of ask near the end, you know, what else would you like to add to this, you know, just to get, to get a portrait of what we're talking about. You know, um, we would do this in, if you were taking my in-person class. You know, but this might be something that you practice on with maybe a friend or a family member. You know, somebody, somebody you know, right? So some you want you want to avoid interviewing somebody you know well. You know, when you actually do the paper, you know, but just for the practice of coming up with interview questions. You know, it might not hurt to mock interview someone. So maybe sketch down some questions, you know, play the game, you know, see what kinds of notes, you know, you get out of, the, out of them if you just do a mock interview with someone, you know, that you, that you know well. In just one moment, you guys can probably skip ahead. You guys can probably skip ahead a moment in the video. Until I come up with the next screen. Okay, so the next, the next thing I want to talk about, of course, you do your interview, and from your interview, you get, you know, a story out of it. So then when you actually sit down to compose your paper, you know, you want to ask yourself, well, what is your angle? What's the kind of paper that you want to do? And, and your angle is pretty much... You know, what we just discussed about with the different types of profiles there are. You know, so maybe your angle is a human interest story. You're talking about how somebody overcomes great odds, you know, to get somewhere. Maybe uh, you're painting a personality profile of someone successful, or maybe somebody who's still struggling, or something like that. you got to know, so from the story... From the interview notes, you kind of have this gut instinct. You know, here's the type of story that I want to tell. I'm not just telling a story just to tell a story. You know, it's the same thing that you did in your personal narratives. You want to have it. Remember, in your personal narratives, in the conclusion, you drove home what your point was. You know, this is the life lesson you know, that I'm driving home to the reader about my experience. Same thing for the angle of your profile. 
you know, except maybe it's not just all sort of confined in one paragraph like it is in the uh, narrative. You know, the whole story of your profile follows your angle. So as the handout here shows, think of an angle this way. Your subject is the general subject matter, the person, place, event, organization, what you're writing about. And so whenever you pitch your topic to me you know, for the check-in, that's what you know. You know what you, you want to know what your subject is. Maybe you have a suspicion or an idea of what where the angle was going to go, but you don't really know where the angle is going to go until the interview is done. So once you get your interview notes, the angle is the specific poke focus that makes the topic the most interesting to the audience. So it says, so a good angle, a good angle has a focus. A focus answers the question, so what? Effective piece of writing establishes a single focus and sustains that focus throughout the piece. Just as a photographer needs to focus on a particular subject to produce a clear picture, a writer needs to focus on a single topic or main idea in order to produce an effective piece of writing. So if you know that you want to tell a human interest story, make that your main focus, make that your angle. Maybe it's a kind of a unique blend of a human interest and personality, or maybe a personality with news, or a historical profile with personality. Like you always sort of want to know your angle. You don't want to get too off subject about your angle. It says by establishing a clear focus before you start to write, students can craft their writing into a coherent, unified whole. Finding a focus helps students find the significance in their stories, the message that they want to convey to the audience, their reason for writing. You know, so if you don't know what your, the significance of the story is, you're getting ready to tell, you're going to struggle writing this thing. And so I just want to make that explicitly clear. Yes, it, it, that's usually the most common type of problem with the content with these papers. You know, I've had people interview their roommates in college, right? So they don't really have an angle. You know, it's just the closest person that's breathing next to them, right? And I have to get this assignment done. Yeah, you know, you'll want to avoid that kind of thing if you're going to be successful you know, with this assignment. So this handout gives a good example here. So maybe your topic is nursing. Maybe you're a nursing major. Um, your angle is technology. You know, so what's your, what a feature article might look like in that case is what's it like to be a nurse in the 21st century with access to technology. And so maybe you want to point out to the reader you know, maybe all the new interesting technologies nurses have to make their lives somewhat easier. Criminal justice and writing. So maybe you'd interview a police officer you know, maybe your focus then would be how do police officers use writing is important to their work. You know, police officers have to do a lot of writing you know, as far as writing up you know, reports and summaries of accidents. You know, detectives who do really big police work like murders or arson or something like that, they have to write very detailed reports. You know, so... You're interviewing a cop in that case, you know, but you know, that's the angle that you would take, and that's interesting, right? It would be interesting to learn and profile how do police officers use writing, right? So, again, maybe you have an idea that specific when you go into the interview. That would be great, you know, but let the interview grow Evolve. If you notice an in a pattern like this going, improvise and let it grow. It says another example comes from a previous student's profile. The student was interested in writing about the WVU rifle team. Of course, we're at Southern, but we're all proud mountaineers. You know, unless you're one of those martial people. You know, so 
saying this with a grain with a grain of salt. You know, since you guys know, I'm a grad student at WVU. You know, but uh, of course we all know WVU has a good rifle team, right? Yeah, you know, but a story about the rifle team doing what they do every day was only mildly interesting. The story about a WVU rifle team became much more interesting when the students chose an angle that was unique and unexpected. He wrote his pro profile about the one woman on the t rifle team and what her experience was like in a sport historically and currently dominated by men. Right, that's a human interest angle you know, that also kind of takes a, uh, you know, it takes that sort of feminist lens about women striving for more equality even in sports. And so going back to our prompt then, we uh, locate the prompt. So that's interviews and the types of profiles. You know, so you always sort of want to ask yourself, who's my audience? You know, so whenever you write the profile, ask yourself, who would give, who would give a crap about reading this? You know, so imagine what what your ideal audience would be. So maybe if it was a sports profile, it would be like a sports website or a magazine, like the Sporting News, or maybe even just like a paper, like the Charleston Gazette or the Register Herald Sports Section, right? You know, or maybe if you know, what, depending on the subject of the profile, what would be the most the best venue where you would find readers. For this, uh, that's something you have to think about. Your audience is not just me. You have to also ask yourself, um, who would your ideal audience be? You know, where where would you be able to send your profile? If it turns out to be a good profile, maybe you would want to publish it. You know, so you want to use the same skills that we use with the narrative. So you want to draw the reader in with details, facts, and descriptions. Now, sometimes you'll see this with one of the student examples that I give you for next time. It's also fine to incorporate images into the profile. You now, if the images have a point, so one of the uh, profiles you'll read is on somebody with cystic fibrosis. You know, and the person incorporates some images you know, to good effect. It's always ask you always sort of want to ask yourself, so what? You know, if, if you incorporate an image, okay, make sure it has a purpose. You know, but same thing for details, right? You want your details to be leading to something larger and greater, as well as drawing the reader in, making the paper interesting. It says stick to one topic per paragraph, transition smoothly from one topic to another, make sure the topic sentence of each paragraph lets the reader know what's coming. You know, so you know, whenever you paragraph your paper, you, know, you want to kind of make sure you stay on track, you don't skip back and forth between topics. I will probably film another video pretty soon on paragraphing. I'll, I'll do this for paper two's peer review. So paragraphing, making sure that you have good topic sentences and all that good stuff. You know, but just for now, know that you kind of want to you know, want to know what your focus is, and then your paragraphs become that much more focused. You know, because you're focusing on one idea per paragraph. One, of course, this is an English 101 class. One of the common misconceptions that comes from high school English you know, is you should only have five paragraphs in an essay. You have an intro, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. You know, that's a very elementary. You know, that teaches you some good skills about how to organize, you know, but that's a very elementary model. You guys can have as many paragraphs as you want. You know, they should, paragraphs should have a healthy length, you know, but not too long. You kind of always want to have a paragraph that stick to a point, then you transition into the next point until you're done. Take as many, take as many paragraphs as you need, even with details. Stop and smell the roses, you know, kind of like we talked about with the first paper. 
So how is this going to be assessed? Just like with the narratives, you know, it's this your first draft you'll submit to me is a final for now. You know, so what are some things you're going to be looking for? Do you have a strong and appropriate topic? You know, or is it something boring like interviewing your roommate just because you're interviewing your mom because she's the easiest person to get in touch with? You know, does, do you have an appropriate interview subject? You know, do you mostly follow the styles and conventions of a magazine feature? You know, so the biggest. So what we mean here, the biggest convention you'd have is, of course, you want to tell a story. But from your interview transcript, you also want to use as many direct quotes you possibly can you know, from the interview. You want to incorporate your interviewee's voice in as much as you can. You don't want your whole paper to read like an interview transcript. I then asked him this. She replied this. I then decided to ask her this. That's not a, that's not a magazine feature. right? That's an interview transcript. So you want to avoid that. Finding, selecting, and integrating information. So using detail, direct quotes. Your voice, showing your personality. So you want to project your angle through your voice. But you want to avoid using stuffy language while being professional. Sometimes in a beginning class like this, Students always think, let me use, I'm going to use big words to try to make myself sound smart. You know, don't do that. Stick to the language you know, you know, in addition to practicing, you know, good conventions, like don't use comma splices, cut out as many adverbs as you can, all the stuff I talked about in that paper one peer review video. But, you know, Stay away from the thesaurus on this one. You don't have to get out of your way and make yourself sound smart. Remember, your ideal audience you know, is a very t common type of reader who might be reading a newspaper or a magazine. You want to cite your interview on a works cited page. You know, so I'll go over that in the next video so you guys will know. Then the length requirement. This is going to be slightly longer than the, the uh, personal narrative, about four to five pages. Okay. Good news is you're going to be incorporating a lot of direct quotes, and so those will help. You know, but you know, of course, have as much length as you need to tell the story. Maybe if you only have like two and a half pages, that's probably not enough time to tell a good story about somebody. The four or five there pages is there for a general recommendation. Okay. Then the calendar. This calendar is for the 16-week online class. My 12-week online class, this page will look different. Okay. Yeah, but for both classes, though, the dates will be different. But first day after the check-in where you watch this video you need to pitch your topic to me in addition to reading over the student samples so once you read over the student samples I'm going to give you some questions to answer on the discussion board you know those will help you think about like what kind of profile is this you know are some of the details relevant that'll be questions like that then this will be different for the 12 week class just because our timetable is tightened. You know, but, uh, you know, if you want to discuss an early draft or maybe like discuss your interview, whatever I can be of help with early in the process, you know, you could schedule a conference with me. So I know some of my online students are pretty close to the Wyoming campus. You know, if you're in that boat, come and see me in my office. You know, but if you're far away from the Wyoming campus, what I will do this time, the first paper, there was a little bit of confusion. Maybe I wasn't in the office at a certain time when you called or something like that. And so what I'm going to do this time 
I'm going to send you a list of a sign up sheet. And if you want a times that I will for sure be in my office, I'm actually recording this video from home, you know, but I will send you a sign up sheet that what you would what will do if you want to talk to me, you know, write your name on the sign up sheet and then list how you plan to contact me. So will you contact me by cell phone by phone in my office? Or do you want to talk to me on Skype for FaceTime? List the way you want to contact me, or if you want to come in person, right? List the way that you want to contact me so that I'll sit there and I'll be ready for you. It also wouldn't hurt to maybe send, if you plan to go over a draft with me, maybe send it to me a little bit ahead of time. That way I can go over it in my office. That way I don't have to just kind of sit there awkwardly you know, and read the paper. You know, while uh, you're on the phone or on Skype or something with me, let me prepare beforehand. You know, if you want to have a conference with me, whether on the phone or Skype, if you come in person, you can just bring the paper, you know, or do whatever while I read over it. That's how it normally would go if you're in an in person class. Then we'll do a peer review, you know, where you will. Post your paper and you'll respond to two other students just like we did with the first paper. And then you'll finally submit it. You know, the only difference between a 16 and a 12 week course is we're not going to have a day just for conferences in a 12 week course. But if you're in that course, you can still schedule a conference with me during that week. You know, so this was probably a long video, you know, but I hope it was helpful. You know, I will post all these PowerPoints and, and notes and all this. You know, the, the uh, student examples are already up. I'll post the questions for those so that you'll have those to respond to. You know, so if you guys have any questions, you know, contact me. You know, that's, that's what I'm here for. You know, the online class. You know, the biggest struggle with an online class is proper communication. You know, I'm trying my best, you know, to communicate with all of you as well as I can. You know, but, you know, if you don't understand something, responsibility is on you to get in touch with me. Okay? Or if you want to talk through something or what have you. You know, email me at my email address, JD. Jeff.Yeager at southernwv.edu or jwyeager at mix.wvu.edu. So until next time, I hope this video was helpful. If there's something I didn't chat discuss in this video, send me questions and I'll be happy to you know, even record a new video you know, if there's things I should have discussed more here. Uh, but until next time, you guys have a great a great you know, rest of your day whenever you're watching this.